Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tanker.com video, we're going to be discussing, as well as analysing, a patent, actually. And this is for the PlayStation 5, and it is a proposed solution to improve the cooling capacity of the PS5 system. We've actually seen a couple of patents previous to this for the PS5's uh, cooling solution, and I've discussed one rather extensively in the past. I'll try to remember to link it in the video, but I will also be referencing it a little bit in this particular video. A number of you actually asked me to cover this and uh, provide my insight into it, so, well, by golly gosh, that's what we're going to be doing. I will also just take a second to point out the obvious, and that is that a patent is a patent. A patent does not necessarily become the uh, product or part of a product. So in this particular instance, the patent was filed a while ago, but it has only become public, well, very recently. And this is the case of many patents, Sony, Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, and so on. They file patents all of the time, and sometimes these patents go nowhere. They don't become part of a product. And other times, of course, they do become part of a retail product uh, further down the line. So with that said, I believe that this patent likely is for the PlayStation 5 from what I'm hearing through the grapevine. I've actually heard about this before the publication of this, but I didn't know any of the specifics and I also didn't know a couple of the aspects of this. So to be honest with you, I didn't report it because I was a little bit skeptical, but well... <laughs> yeah, turns out I should have reported it. Anywho, um, so what is imperative to realise is that, of course, any electronic device like a console, a graphics card, a CPU, and so on, they all obviously operate within certain thermal envelopes. So, for example, if you have a console, it has an APU, that's accelerated processing unit and basically that's a CPU, a GPU and other components all mashed together onto essentially the same die. Um, and basically the job here is to remove the heat that that APU produces, especially when it's under load, i.e. playing a game, as efficiently as possible. And therefore, of course, you want something like a heat sink or heat pipes or something else which transfers that heat to eventually be dissipated via, let's say, a fan. Now, there are definitely other means to cool something down. For example, you could use something like um, liquid nitrogen, but generally speaking, that is uh, something that is strictly in the realms of PC enthusiasts, and uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to uh, focus on um, standard heat pipes, uh, heat sinks, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, as you can see in this particular video, typically speaking, you would use something like a thermal grease or a uh, thermal paste. You can also refer to it as that. And basically speaking, the purpose of this is to provide a thermal interface material, or if you want to sound really knowledgeable, you could just call it a TIM, between the APU, CPU, GPU, whatever, and the cooler itself. So basically, if you were to just stick the cooler directly on, let's say, the APU, what happens is it's not a perfect seal. So just because of how manufacturing works, the actual transfer of heat is not particularly good in that case. So therefore, you need something to be able to help facilitate the transfer of heat from, once again, uh, in this case, I'm showing, uh, obviously, just kind of rubbing it on some um, cardboard, and you can see the kind of consistency. This particular uh, thermal paste is not necessarily the best. It's honestly just one that I had available, and I didn't mind... Uh, kind of using a little bit of it. It's kind of a cheaper one. That's not a knock to Cooler Master. It's just some generic stuff that I happen to have lying around. And I didn't really want to throw uh, some of the more expensive one onto a piece of uh, 
onto a piece of cardboard, but you can kind of see the consistency here. And now we'll move on to a different thing. This is where I'm removing the cooler from an AMD CPU. And this is actually a, a AIO or all in one. So basically this kind of operates as a, um, uh, kind of a water cooling solution. It's essentially just a closed loop. So you have a big radiator and then that radiator is obviously filled with water and then that water gets cycled via a pump to the um, heat sink and then the heat sink obviously collects the heat, it gets put to the water, the water then goes to the radiator, you can kind of get the idea. And as we take it off, you can see the difference in how the uh, thermal interface material uh, bonds basically to the CPU as well as the, um, the, the the cooler itself, the copper plate. But, and you knew there was going to be a but, there are different materials that you can use as the TIM, and hardcore PC overclockers have frequently resorted to something like a liquid metal. And this is particularly prevalent if you do something like de-lidding the CPU. Very briefly, what that basically means is, let's say we look at the 3700X here, or um, one of these uh, 10900K CPUs from Intel, you could basically see that the actual core itself is not visible. Instead, you've got what looks basically kind of like a little bit of metal on top of it. And that's because that is uh, covering, for lack of a better term, the actual core which is lying underneath that. And um, you can see this in uh, this uh, GPU, this uh, GeForce card, where I've actually removed the cooler. And in this particular instance, it doesn't have a um, it doesn't have a lid on it. You don't need to delid it. The cooler is right there. You can directly see the die. And the reason, well, there's a couple of reasons that this is done, but primarily it's just so that you don't damage the processor um, when you're actually putting on the cooler. So basically what happens is inside the um, inside the CPU, you have basically one layer of, you've got the CPU core, and then of course you've got the thermal interface material, which then goes on top of the lid, and then from there you would apply thermal paste or whatever, and then of course you apply the cooler, which obviously reduces the potential for cooling. I know I've just spent a whole bunch of time explaining, well, something that doesn't seem to pertain to the patent, but I really wanted to set the background up for this because I feel it was uh, incredibly important for you to kind of get an idea of why Sony have done what they've done. Whew, okay, so what exactly are Sony doing here? Well, unfortunately, I would love to play the T1000 theme, um, or you know, Terminator 2 theme, but I can't because of copyright, but they are basically using a liquid metal. And the purpose here is to improve the thermal conductivity between the CPU, APU, well, let's face it, it's an APU for the PlayStation 5, and the cooling solution itself. And this, once again, is incredibly important because the better the thermal conductivity, the better that you can transfer that heat, the more effectively you can cool it. Because what you don't want to do, of course, is have a really awesome cooling solution, but only a small percentage of that heat can actually find the, you know, the, the, the cooling solution because most of it is just trapped into the core of the um, of the console uh, APU. Now, what I don't know is whether these drawings are 100% accurate. So what I can't tell you is whether this is direct die cooling or whether, once again, it is the whole core itself is somehow protected. Um, I could probably guess it's going to be direct die. Uh, it looks like it's direct die, but obviously a patent could just be an example and they may choose to do something a little bit differently. But long story short, um, the purpose of this is because no matter how flat you try to manufacture this, there are basically grooves. There's basically air that gets trapped in between, as I mentioned earlier, and that means you can't get perfect conductivity in terms of heat transfer. So you could use the thermal goop, which, once again, I'm showing here, 
or you could use something else like liquid metal. And what they appear to be showing is some kind of isolation walls or some type of chamber which essentially stops this liquid metal from seeping out and uh, I guess you could say becoming worse over time as one of the things that you get if you are a uh, PC enthusiast and you do do um, something like this and you use liquid metal you can need to replace it. So it looks like what Sony are trying to do here is essentially improve this performance. Because, once again, to my knowledge, it uh, I have not had a huge amount of uh, experience with liquid metal, and that's putting it mildly. Um, but to my knowledge, it basically is a liquid at uh, room temperature and therefore when you put it under a greater thermal load theoretically speaking it's much better that um, when it actually comes to transferring well you know heat but obviously you don't want it to seep out um, because well a it would reduce the cooling capacity I mean obviously if all the liquid over a couple of you know years seeped out then uh, your console would basically turn into a fireball but the second and most obvious thing is that uh, metal is not exactly known for its insulation ability. You know, it, it kind of uh, it kind of conducts electricity. So a liquid metal that would freely be able to, you know, flow onto something like a circuit is probably not the best thing in the world. So it looks like Sony are basically making a way to um, not transfer that heat. Uh, sorry, not have the metal drip out and effectively transfer heat. Um, what we've seen, of course, in a previous patent, he says, trying to remember where that patent was and digging through his files, um, is that we've seen almost like a, a, pinch, a pincer approach from Sony. It looks like they are cooling a die using two heat sinks, or possibly um, it's transferring the heat from one side of the board to the other because obviously with PCB on the top side that's where the chip is and then on the underside generally speaking there's no cooling there but it seems like Sony's solution basically transfers the heat via um, heat pipes which go through the chip itself and then it takes it to the opposite side. But if you look very closely, it seems, and I stress that word, that the dies themselves are stacked, and it's basically cooling the die from both the top and the bottom. I've once again gone into this much more extensively in a, another pattern, but I think that the PlayStation 5's cooling solution is going to be very impressive. And um, obviously that this is one of the reasons that Sony are able to run the clock frequency of the GPU so high. And remember, Cerny himself has said that this is not firmly limited. The PS5 is not firmly limited. Instead, the clock frequency adjusts itself depending on the load in terms of power consumption of the various parts. And again, as I've discussed uh, in analyses and also in a couple of exclusives, when it comes to the shifting of clock frequencies, it's done within, you know, a couple of milliseconds. To put that into context, a um, 60 FPS game runs at 16.67 milliseconds, whereas 120, which is obviously the target frame rate for VR, would be around 8 milliseconds. What does all of that mean? Well, basically speaking, Within the space of a frame being rendered, the clock frequency on a CPU slash GPU could adjust on the PlayStation 5 several times. And furthermore, from what I've uh, kind of detailed in an exclusive on the PS5 APU bring up, it seems like the frequency can adjust even on a per CU level. But um, I'll try to remember to link that in the video description. As I said, I want to make this kind of a quicker video, and it's already turned into 15 minutes. So, yeah, that was a bit longer than I expected. Um, 
Apparently, brevity is not something I'm really good at. Who knew? But uh, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. The normal stuff, if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'd also like to spend just a second to remind you that the Hot Chips conference for the Xbox is going to be soon. Well, actually, it's today as of the time I'm recording this, but I don't know when they're going to be putting the videos live. So hopefully it will be soon, trademark, and I'll be doing a full breakdown of what Microsoft chooses to reveal. I don't know if they'll be doing... Uh, a full reveal of the console, but I certainly want to go through, you know, what they do reveal, and um, so I'm super excited about that, and second thing, I'd also like to thank everyone for helping us reach 72,000 subscribers, that is a lot of people, <laughs> to be honest, that's a crap ton of people, so thank you very much for all of your support, and well, also thank you very much for watching the video. With that said, take care of yourselves, bye for now.